Oh, hey guys. Uh, so tomorrow morning, I'm going to Canada, but I just realized today that I don't have a passport and I need one because apparently Canada is the one state in the US that needs a passport. But lucky for me, a guy from Craigslist said he looks a lot like me and that I could use his. So I'm hoping, oh, I, oh, that's him. Hi. Hi. Are you Karthik from Craigslist? Yeah, that's me. Thanks. Is this a fake? <laughs> why, why would you say that? <laughs> well, you don't look very Mexican. And you said your name was Karthik. The mustache on your passport looks like it was drawn on. The mustache on your face looks like it was drawn on. <laughs> I mean, it's mixed ups and you know how things happen. Well, look, if you're just trying to pawn off your ID because you're in some kind of legal trouble. What the? Wow. I didn't have to pay him. My name is Ashwin, and I'm a seasoned nature expeditionaire. From my vast experiences, I've gained a wealth of knowledge that I will now pass on to you. From caving in New Zealand, to discovering wild animals in Africa, from the coldest corners in Alaska, to the hottest deserts in Texas, I'll bring you along on my journey through this planet we call Earth, because this is Ashwin Enjoys Nature. No two words spell beauty like Banff does, a park that's consistently rated one of the most beautiful in the world. And it definitely lives up to the hype. Driving around Banff feels like you're driving through a Coors Light commercial, and nothing beats driving around with the frost brewed taste of the Rockies. And it was while driving around that I had my first, but not least, wild encounter. The black bear. And shortly thereafter, a cinnamon black bear. And shortly thereafter, the grizzly bear. But wait, Ashwin, how do you know that's a grizzly bear and that the other one is a cinnamon black bear? Man, your expert animal classification skills never ceases to impress. Well, there's a couple key differences between grizzly bears and black bears that will help you tell them apart even if they have a kin skin. Grizzlies are larger than black bears, while on the other hand, black bears are smaller than grizzlies. Grizzlies have a hump on their back, whereas black bears hump from the back. Grizzlies hibernate for six to seven months, so the next time you encounter a grizzly and a black bear and you can't tell them apart, just remember, you're gonna fucking die. Which begs the question, what should you do if you encounter a bear in the wild? Well, thankfully, the National Park Service has created a list of actions that you can take to protect yourself. One, stay calm. <sighs> Chillin. Two, identify yourself. My name's Ashwin, I swear, it's not my real passport. Three, pick up small children. Hey, can I pick you up? Wait, let me pick you up. And four, camouflage yourself with leaves. Is it gone yet? But the safest approach is prevention. So don't forget to wear your bear repellent before heading out. Besides driving, Banff also offers many other unique outdoor activities like hiking. And it was on one of these hikes where I encountered a massive herd of elk or wapiti as it's called in East Asia, or no, not elk as in moose, but elk as in like the American elk, like the large deer, as it's called in the rest of Eurasia. Elk are one of the most numerous mammals in Banff, and I believe it too. In my time in Banff, I probably saw at least like six or seven, but they don't just exist in large numbers. Elk are also the largest mammals found in Banff behind the moose, thanks in part to their massive antlers. Antlers are covered in a layer of velvety-like skin called velvet. This velvet feeds oxygen and nutrients to the antlers, helping them grow and grow forever. No trip to Banff is complete without stopping by Lake Louise. Said a million different people today, probably. Banff is overrun with tourists in some parts, especially Lake Louise and Moraine Lake. And nothing gets my blood boiling more than knowing that other people are getting outdoors to learn, enjoy, and reaffirm our protected public lands. As much as I enjoy complaining, I decided to explore a different path. A six kilometer hike between Lake Moraine and Lake Louise takes you to a less frequented species of lake called Lake Annette. Lake Annette is probably the prettiest area that I've ever been in. In fact, Lake Annette is so pretty that it's often described as located within Banff National Park. The lake has the same iconic emerald color just like Lake Louise, which is a result of the sun reflecting off a substance called rock flower, which is really just powdered up rock. 
Instead of just telling you about rock flour, how about we do a little bit of experimentation so that emerald color emerges when you mix the glacial water with a fine rock powder. Lucky for me, a gentleman behind the HEB was able to sell me some fine rock powder, which he says is from South America, so probably from the Andes, which is perfect because they have a bunch of emerald lakes. So if we just disperse this powder into the water and mix it in, it will slowly turn that emerald blue. I told you it fucking work! I fucking told you I'm so amped right now! Even better than the colors of Lake Annette was the serenity. After enduring hundreds of tourists posing for candids and taking pictures to make it look like they're alone with nature, it was nice to finally find some actual solidarity in Banff. No other living being in sight. Just me, a marmot, and Mother Nature. Though Canadians love to say eh, there's nothing eh about Banff. And once you find yourself your own little slice of the outdoors, you can truly enjoy our nature.